Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. Today, I'm gonna to be doing my first ever Springbok puzzle. Uh, here in Australia, Springbok is pretty much impossible to get. I've never see seen them in store anywhere and I don't even think that I've seen them online except Amazon. So that's where I grabbed this one. This is one I found on Amazon Australia. And uh, yeah, I just thought it was a really fun colorful looking puzzle um, kind of a nice celebratory puzzle to do as my first springbok and it's also a little bit kitsch and makes me think of 80s cookbooks but i think that's kind of fun um, yeah so in a sec we will have a closer look at the packaging open it up and have a look at the pieces and sort of see what we're dealing with and then we'll get into some puzzling so let's just have a closer look at the packaging um, so it, I don't know if all spring rock puzzles are like this, but this one comes in like a square shaped and kind of thinnish, I guess, box. Um, the cardboard kind of feels a little bit flimsy, like it's pretty bendy. Um, so yeah. Um, anyway, the front has the nice colorful image on it and then has spring block and it's 1000 pieces. And also just mentions that um, it's been like making puzzles for over 57 years, which is pretty cool. And then each of the sides has, what does it have? Oh, just sort of like a bit of consumer, like, or oh, I guess information about the puzzle and where it's made and what it's made from and stuff like that. And then, yeah, just the logo and the image. Um, again, a bit more like information, size, of I mean, amount of pieces, uh, logo, name, which is icing on the cake. I don't know if I said that before. And the picture and then, <laughs> We're getting there and then kind of the same information here but just different colors and then on the back um it's just got a bit of information about i guess like their puzzles in the company it says we use 18 percent thicker cardboard than the average puzzle um they're all made in kansas city missouri which is nice to know um and oh it says due to our unique dyes no two puzzle pieces are alike. So that's really cool. I actually like that because it means hopefully we won't get any false fits. Um, so let's open it up and see what's in here. Okay. So, yep, just, oh yeah, pretty like sort of plain cardboard. Um, I mean, I personally prefer my puzzle boxes to be a bit more sturdy. Um, just means they are less likely to get damaged or squashed, but you know, like at least it's, I guess it probably means it's fairly recyclable if you did end up, I guess, throwing it out. And then, yeah, it's just pretty simple. Just a bag of puzzle pieces, which at first glance, they look pretty big actually, like, and very irregular. So that's going to be interesting. And then, yeah, just pretty like ordinary, pretty basic, a bit of information around the sides about like warranty and things like that. Um, so let's open up the pieces and have a bit of a closer look. Okay, so there's a bit of puzzle dust, like I can see it in the bag. Um, yeah, they smell very cardboardy. And wow, they're really, uh, they definitely have some interesting shapes. So, and there's a few that are stuck together, like the, I guess the die cut hasn't gone all the way through. So like, I don't know. Oh, it seems like I can like pull them apart pretty easily. That's yeah, but there are definitely some that are like, don't seem to have, yeah, where the, the cut hasn't gone all the way through. So maybe the, the die cut machine or die cut that they used was a little bit blunt or has done quite a lot of puzzles. So this one, I might have to use a scalpel to se separate. I don't want to like, tear the cardboard on the back so anyway speaking of the cardboard on the back um yeah so it just looks like it's a sort of gray like the natural sort of gray gray board i guess and then the front is like smooth but a bit glossy um so yeah they're just like cardboard pieces but yeah they're definitely big like bigger than like something like ravensburger or something like that and they say they're thick but like i guess i guess they are um they definitely you could bend them, but they seem pretty sturdy. So yeah, but yeah, they're definitely, they feel big. So, oh, there's some really interesting shapes. So this is a whole, whole one. So 
yeah, pretty, pretty interesting shape. And what else? Oh, they're, yeah, very irregular. Um, I think like, I haven't done that many puzzles that have like really irregular shapes. Like I think some of my cobble hill ones do. So that makes them quite interesting to put together and sometimes a little challenging. So that could make this pretty difficult. I don't know, or maybe sometimes it'll be easier. Um, yeah, some very like, very irregular shapes. So at least, yeah, there shouldn't be any false fits. Um, whoa, this one's pretty interesting too. Maybe I'll put them here. I don't know if you'll be able to see them any better, but I'll probably put a closer look at the pieces up in the corner here as well. So, but yeah, they're like really interesting shaped. Um, they kind of feel, I guess like, they feel okay. They definitely don't make me feel like I'm doing a high quality puzzle um, because they feel like, like the back sort of where it's been cut out has these like, feels a bit, a little bit rough, a bit tatty. I don't know, like, um, and just like the fact that it just feels like a, yeah, like just cardboard with like a gloss. It, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like you're doing a luxury puzzle. Let's put it that way. Um, but you know, that doesn't mean it won't be a fun and like a good puzzling experience. Like, I don't think, you know, you have to have the most luxe pieces ever to have a fun, fun experience. You know, it's more about how do they pieces fit together and you know, how like, is this gloss finish going to be like too shiny? Or is it going to affect my puzzling or not? Things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely really interested, interested to try this and see what the, like how these sort of ir really irregular and interesting shape pieces sort of fit together like and see what yeah see what the fits like um yeah so i think we will get into some puzzling in a sec so i've got my puzzle board out and i'm ready to sort of start figuring out how i'm going to sort these pieces and how where i'm going to start on the puzzle um also it's a bit of a different size like this is the puzzle board I usually keep for my 1000 pieces and this is 1000 pieces but the size is somewhere oh here you, uh, it's 61 centimeters by 76.2 or 24 inches by 30 inches um so the size is a little bit in centimeters is a bit bigger than like a sort of standard 1000 piece the standard is like 50 centimeters by 70 so it's definitely like what 11 centimeters bigger on one side and six and a bit centimeters bigger on the other so I'm, I should have probably measured the size of this board but I'm fingers crossed it fits if not I guess we're doing it on the table so we'll see how I go and if the border actually fits on here and also it seems like it's a slight well it is a slight re rectangle based on the measurements so that means I'll be doing it sort of sideways um, that's usually how I do all my sort of, um, I guess, like portrait style uh, puzzles. I tend to do them sideways because if I, I mean, I could potentially do them like in long ways, but it means like spinning my puzzle board around more. Um, but at least to get started with, to be able to reach the border, it's probably easier to do it this direction. So. You'll, we'll see maybe uh, like if I need to I'll change the direction of the board and things like that um, so I figure looking at the picture it's a pretty varied picture so I think pulling out the border or edge pieces should be maybe a, like I think it'll be a good place to start um, I don't I've never like this with these pieces being irregular I don't know if there's gonna be any like false edges or not there could be but We'll just have to see how it goes, I guess. And then after that, I'm thinking I might pull out all this blue because it's really distinct. Like there's no other blue in this image at all. So I think that could be fun to do that. And then I might head on down to the bottom and try and pick out like the strawberries, maybe some of this like white dish and then the brown and then maybe work my way up through the layers of the cake. Um, we'll see how it goes. I mean, that sounds easy, but maybe it won't be that easy or I might find a, I don't know, a better way to do it. We'll see. Um, yeah. So let's start pulling out some border pieces and 
border and blue, which some of them are going to be both. So if they're blue and a border, they'll go in the border pile. Um, to me, that makes sense. Um, yeah, there's definitely quite a lot here that are stuck together, but they seem like they most of them come apart pretty easily. Um, I mean, like that happens like with quite a lot of puzzles where the, you know, the die cut just hasn't gone all the way through. But most of the time it's a pretty easy fix. And I'm kind of glad these don't have any backing paper because sometimes like when they do have backing paper, it can make like trying to separate them if they're not all the way cut all the way through a bit more difficult and rips off like the backing paper. So here's a blue one. But yeah, I think this is going to be, I don't know if it's going to be a fun experience putting together irregular pieces. I, I think it would definitely be interesting. I definitely haven't seen many brands that have them. I mean, I know they're out there, but there just seems to be less and less I find. Um, like I'm pretty sure some of my Eurographics used to be irregular, but now they're all just sort of standard shapes. So yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't seen too many brands that have this sort of different piece shapes, except for, like I said, Cobble Hill. So ugh. seems okay. There's definitely a lot of blue border pieces. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna keep on doing this and pull out as many other blue ones that aren't border pieces. I might just do that first and then um, pull out like the brown pieces and things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep on doing this and then get into some puzzling.
So I'm back after not one, but two long puzzling sessions. Um, so far I've spent over seven hours working on this and it's still not finished. Um, so yeah, definitely foresee, well, at least one more puzzling session. Hopefully that'll be the only one to finish this off. Um, but yeah, so a couple of things. Um, you've probably noticed that I'm on a different puzzling board than I was going to puzzle on. And that's because I decided just before I got into puzzling, maybe I should measure the dimensions of the puzzle versus my puzzle board. And yes, lo and behold, the puzzle board, which normally fits like your sort of average standard size 1000 piece puzzles, was not going to fit this. So yes, we had to upgrade. Um, and I think I was going to do it sideways anyway, which I'm still doing just because if I did it the other way, there's no way I could reach the other side. I mean, I can barely reach it. Like now it's a bit of a struggle and even in, I did still have to get up and walk around and put pieces in uh, like properly anyway. So yeah, so it's still been a struggle um, even having it sideways. So um, yeah, what, oh, and you may have noticed, some of you may have noticed that I didn't, as, well, as usual, I changed my mind on how I was going to put this puzzle together. So I still put the border together and then the blue. And then I think I said I was going to sort of work my way up, like do the brown or some of the bottom stuff. Well, you know, of course, at the last minute, I changed my mind and decided that the pink and the, the strawberries were very pretty. And that's what I wanted to do first. So, so yes, the poor chocolate color got uh, pushed to the wayside and ended up doing the pretty pinks. Um, but to be honest, I don't think, I think both are probably just as hard as each other. I've actually found this puzzle quite challenging, which is, I guess, why it's taken so long to get to this stage of the puzzle. And um, yeah, part of that is because of the piece shapes, like they're very irregular. So, and I just don't do a lot of puzzles with irregular piece shapes. I think like um, Cobble Hills, one of the only other brands that I own that sort of have these and I haven't even done that many of their puzzles. So I just don't get that sort of practice. And so, um, you know, it takes me a while to figure out where pieces go, but also um, just this sort of style of this puzzle. It's like, I guess the way the, the photography and the textures of the like elements in the cake are just really tricky to put together. So yeah, so I guess if you were to do this puzzle, it probably doesn't really matter which areas you start on I think a lot are pretty tricky like the pink was just as, was pretty time consuming and was just as tricky as like the wafers and the chocolate so yeah I think you might as well just pick whichever you like the best and start on that um yeah so I guess like so far pros and cons like cons are that um well the size yeah it's like I kind of I don't know why it's bigger than your average 1000 piece it's a bit annoying for someone like me where I struggle to reach the other side. Um, so I don't know if like all their 1000 pieces are like this size or it's just this one or some of them. I mean, if you've done a lot of them, let me know. Um, yeah, and then another thing which you might be able to see, I'm not sure, is there's a lot of puzzle dust, a very chunky cardboardy puzzle dust. And, you know, I've actually um, gotten rid of some of it around the sides, but, you know, you can still see some and there's like a lot in the box, but didn't really make me sneeze surprisingly it's just more you probably it's a bit annoying and um, I guess if you want to take a nice photo you probably want to make sure you clean it off your puzzle um, and then yeah I guess the other con is that these pieces are a bit glossy so sometimes it can be a little bit of a struggle depending on your you know puzzling uh, environment like on lighting and stuff like that sometimes it makes the pieces harder to see so you have to sort of move around or change the angle that you're looking at the pieces. Um, but despite that, I've actually been really enjoying it so far. I wasn't sure how I'd feel about these sort of very chunky cardboardy pieces and this sort of irregular fit, but I've actually, it's really growing me. I've actually been really enjoying it. Like even though it's taking a long time, um, I've been enjoying the challenge of just trying to figure out like, oh, what, what weird piece is gonna go in this spot next? Is it gonna actually be two pieces that form a you know, a bigger shape, like, yeah. And I actually felt like finally in the the second session of puzzling, I was actually getting much better at it. And I was feeling like a lot more comfortable and getting faster at finding the weird shapes. Um, yeah, and so I've like really been enjoying it. And 
I think it looks really cool. Like, um, and they actually fit together pretty well. Um, like, although it's a bit of a 50-50, like, as you can see, some bits come together, but some bits don't. Um, so I'm not sure I really want to risk doing a puzzle pickup at the end of this because I don't feel like cleaning up puzzle pieces off my floor. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure I'd recommend a puzzle pickup with this, with a Springbok puzzle, but, but for sort of puzzling purposes, they, the pieces seem to hold together reasonably well. So, you know, I think that's the more important thing here rather than doing a puzzle pickup, although that is pretty fun. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, the only other thing to me that really stands out is I th like it's really it's, it's just a point of interest is that the pieces like the the I guess the lines around each piece like the definition of each piece is quite strong or really emphasized like I mean obviously like when you look at a puzzle you can tell you can see the puzzle pieces for the most part but some puzzles you can see it more easily or it's more defined than others and this one like you can really see it's quite dark and I guess it's just how the puzzle's been cut. But yeah, I actually think it's kind of, it looks kind of cool and it's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, it's obviously, maybe some people wouldn't like it, especially like on these lighter bits, you know, maybe people would prefer a smoother look of color rather than being able to see all each individual piece. I don't know, but I don't know, I kind of like the look and feel of it. It's kind of, kind of cool, a bit different. Um, so anyway, um, I am about to start on hopefully what will be the last session of puzzling. Um, I've still got a fair bit of chocolate uh, cake to do and I don't know if you can hear that but I think my neighbours are doing a bit of renovations today um, and I've still got a fair bit of white and sort of beigey I think like some crockery and like the cream and bits and pieces so but there's actually not that many pieces left so I'm hoping that this last session won't take anywhere near as long as the first two and you know, yeah, it's a lot less pieces and I'm feeling a lot more familiar and comfortable with how the pieces go together and the overall image and everything. So yeah, fingers crossed it doesn't take too long. Um, yeah, so after that, I'll come back and we'll just have a bit of a chat about the experience as a whole and some final thoughts and, and then we'll be done. Yay, so I've finally finished the, this wonderful cake puzzle from Springbok. Um, that last session took me about an hour and 40, so still like a fair bit of time, but definitely way less than the other two puzzling sessions. But I think still all up, it definitely took, what, like over eight or nine hours. So um, fair bit of time. I've definitely done one other 1000 piece puzzles that have probably taken that long, depending what they are. But for me personally, it's definitely like on the longer end of like how long it takes to do a 1000 piece um, but you know despite that I had a really great time um, I really enjoyed the fit of these like sort of irregular like fun weird shaped pieces they were just yeah a lot of fun to sort of put together and started really getting into like into figuring out how they go I sort of like there's sort of a I feel like a certain way that pieces go together and I feel like you it's kind of hard to explain but I think if you've done a lot of these you'll get what I mean um, it's it's like you see a big shape but then eventually you realize like it's probably actually not a giant piece it's probably actually a couple of two or three pieces that make up that bigger puzzle shape so yeah it's, there's some little tricks like that and even like some sort of false uh, edges around so yeah definitely like 
quite interesting doing uh, a puzzle with these sorts of pieces. Um, yeah, so I guess as for pros and cons, like I mentioned a bit earlier, um, cons are probably, there aren't too many. It's like there's puzzle dust, which didn't actually cause me any problems sinus sneezing wise, but it's just a bit messy. Um, so it's the sort of thing where you definitely have to like clean off your puzzle board and maybe puzzle once you're finished, especially if you want to take a nice photo, you probably just have to like brush off the puzzle dust or wipe it down or something. Um, but it didn't really cause me too many issues. And then I'd say the other couple of things are one, the pieces are definitely glossy. So, um, I mean, thankfully at the moment, I can actually see a fair amount of the puzzle. It's just sort of that section for me that's glossy, like that I can't see. Um, so I think, you know, it's just something to be aware of. It didn't actually cause me too many problems, um, but you know, it probably just depends what kind of lighting you're working under, but just something to be aware of. And then the other thing, it's not really a con, it's more just, it bothered me a little bit, was that the unexpected size, like dimensions and size of this puzzle. Um, I don't, I just don't know why it's bigger than a 1000 piece or why it has to be bigger. I mean, obviously I know why, I guess, because the piece is a bit bigger, but you know, I, I don't know why they've designed this one to be bigger than a sort of average standard 1000 piece. And I don't know if all of their 1000 pieces are this size or not, um, but it just made it a little bit more awkward in that I had to get out a bigger sort of like more cumbersome uh, puzzle board and it meant that I had more trouble reaching from one side to the other. Um, but they're just, they're little things and it's just, that's more a personal thing so that might not be a problem at all for anyone basically i guess my my issue with it is that it meant that i had to get up to place puzzle pieces um, and i am a lazy puzzler and i didn't want to do that so whereas if you like getting up and walking around your puzzle then it's not an issue for you anyway moving on um so yeah that was it for cons and then pros are that it's a really fun bright image like the the print quality is great the colors are nice and vibrant. Um, the pieces fit together well. Uh, also because of like this irregular piece shape, there weren't really any false fits. I think I had like one sort of thing very early on. I don't, I don't know how, but I did, but it was easily fixed and um, yeah, but all the other pieces didn't have any issues going together. And I just, yeah, I really had a lot of fun with those interesting piece shapes. And I quite like this sort of uh, very bold sort of definition of the pieces like it, they look gappy but they're not like it's but they just sort of stand out and it's maybe not for everyone but I, I kind of like the look of it it's very like unusual and interesting and kind of cool I thought um yeah and yeah like I said the pieces go together well however it, they do hold together I think well enough for puzzling but yes I wouldn't trust it for a puzzle pickup I don't think um yeah so um I think that's kind of it like Overall, I just had a really positive and pleasant experience. Like, I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Um, and yeah, I, I would definitely do more Springbok puzzles. So I'm really looking forward to like, like I feel confident in that I can now like, you know, look for more fun Springbok puzzles out there and be confident that they're going to be like reasonable, good quality and you know fun to do um, and I've actually got a little 500 piece one that's quite fun like fun looking and colorful um, I'm guessing that it's the same sort of piece type and quality hopefully because it looks like a really cool puzzle and I like you know I'm looking forward to doing that one now that I've done this one um, so yeah definitely yeah looking forward to getting more Springbok puzzles in my collection um, in terms of recommending it for others like I think in a general sense, yes, I absolutely recommend it. I think it's good fun, pretty reasonable quality. Unfortunately, I don't really know what the price is like because the price that I'm getting it for is just whatever it is on Amazon. So I don't think that's a really like uh, fair representation of what these actually cost in like the US. So I guess maybe in the comments, if you sort of buy Springbok, let me know what sort of price range they're at like are they really affordable or sort of mid-range or are they really expensive i'm sort of guessing they're like affordable to mid-range is my my hunch um i'm not too sure and if that's the case i would say like that's pretty worth it like 
you know, I, I think this is not like the sort of, I don't think you'd be wanting to pay like a Ravensburger price for something like this. Um, I think it, it should be priced lower than that. So if it is, I think that's good. Um, and then we yeah, we totally recommend it then. Um, and I think also it really depends on your puzzling style. Like if you prefer just, if you don't want to get involved with like weird, unusual piece shapes, then maybe this isn't the puzzle for you. Then maybe you do just want to do a very sort of standard puzzle. But if, you know, if you're up for a, a bit of a challenge and something a bit more interesting and unique, then I think, yeah, something like this would be really fun. So yeah, definitely, I think overall recommend it. Um, so I think I've rambled long enough, I guess in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this puzzle. What did you think? Did you like it? Um, you know, have you tried Springbok? Maybe you've got like a whole heap in your collection. Yeah, so I guess let me know your thoughts and experience on the Springbok puzzle brand in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.